All right, for all those fans of Santoni shoes, you're gonna to wanna to stay tuned because we're gonna overhaul a pair of Santoni loafers right after this. So welcome to another episode of Trent and Heath. And so today we are going to overhaul these Santoni shoes. The customer actually requested that we put some orange soles and heels on these. And he's requested some German leather soles on these, very good quality. And then some Italian combo heels. Um, he wanted to add a little bit of color into his into his uh, kind of dull brown shoes because it's spring, and uh, there's some you know Santonis that come with with orange soles and kind of match that liner inside, and so that's what we're going to do. And um, if, for those who aren't familiar with Italian loafers, a lot of Italian loafers, not all, but some are weltless, and you can see right here that there's no welt. That creates that very, very low profile. You see these on like Gucci's and Prada's, and uh, these are no different. It's a very sleek look. So we are actually gonna have to use these soles as a guide um, when we cut the new soles, or else you know we could lose the shape of the original shoe because we don't have a welt to actually follow that original uh, pattern. So um, let's get started. First thing we're going to do is have to take off these hills in the block and then we can get down to the cell where we can trace our pattern. So let's go. All right, before we get started, a few disclaimers. Uh, one, remember we are in a working uh, workshop, so you will have the doorbell and the phone go off. The other is, please try to ignore my, it doesn't look as bad today, but uh, my thumb got, got in a fight with a sander the other day and uh, the 24 grit sandpaper won. So, uh, if it shows up pretty pretty bad on the film, don't get squeamish. All right, so let's get these things off. And right off the bat, when I remove that top left, we can see that these are leather and uh, that's a sign of good quality. Some hill blocks are just made out of like pressed Paper. It almost reminds me of like a really uh, a, a cardboard onion type stuff. It's just very, very, very thin sheets and uh, they peel. They're not the highest quality. Some are made out of like a pulp leather and some are, you know, some are made out of wood. But uh, these are leather. Very good. Here's what we're gonna do. All right, so these nails holding the hill block on, sometimes they got just the little tips, the little nub sticking up, and it's actually kind of hard to pull these off, so I'm gonna sand these flat and it helps getting it off a, a lot easier. A lot of times the, this hill puller will just pop them right off, but not so much when they glue them on. So it's not necessary, but what I like to do is label the hill block that goes with each shoe. So right shoe and right along. So we got to break these first stitches. Usually along the toe, it's pretty easy because either the sole is so thin, but it also one of the first places to wear out. 
So we're just cutting the old stitches. And normally, if this were a welted shoe, we could run our, uh, run our heel puller and separate the sole from the weld. And then you can actually just run a, uh, a knife through there and stitch it. But I mean, I mean to snip them, but with these, there's nothing. If, if you just run a knife through there, you could very easily slice right into the weld, I mean into the, uh, the upper, and we don't want to do that. Because if you cut through that, there's nothing for the stitches to hold onto. Because, as you can tell, this is a Blake stitched shoe. Kind of have to go back and forth on these things because you're also fighting the glue at the same time as you're fighting the stitches and luckily it's a flexible these are one of the uh, reasons why a lot of people do like the welded shoes is because they are not only sleek but they're flexible they mold and they bend to your feet so easily um, unlike a goodyear welted that's got a little bit more rigid robust uh, structure to it and it takes a little bit longer to break in these break in very easily and very quickly. When you get back here towards the waist, these are where the stitches are definitely still gonna be the strongest because it's not hitting the ground. So you kinda of have to take your time on this portion. There we go, so we've cleared the stitches. And what I like to do on these is once I get to where the stitch is in and we get right to where the heels begins, I like to turn it around and start to remove it from the backside because when a shoe is made and they're lasting this in, they're basically taking all the extra leather and they're folding it in. So when you're around this backside, uh, they're taking little bitty pleats and folding it in. And uh, if you're pulling it this way, depending on how, how strong that glue is, it can actually you know, start to pull and rip the upper and pull it outward. So I like to, if it's folded in this way, I like to bring it and, and tear off the, uh, the old sole from the same direction. And this part, you're dealing with a lot, remember all those nails that I just clipped. So you, this thing has a lot of nails coming all the way through. So you want to take your time or else you can damage the upper and just slowly pop there we go and then just like that kind of pull off and we're free let's see this is what I was talking about this is where it's uh, it's folded in these are held on by a little tax um, and it's very easily just to, you can see, you can pull this up. And if you pull it and you're pulling it out, you can actually damage the upper. So that's the only reason I do that. Now, some of these little tacks are uh, holding the upper um, down onto the insole. And some of them are um, just tiny little snippets that, I mean, it takes forever to dig these things out. So I think it actually holds this better. Let's just hit them again. Use the little bit, the remainder of those old tacks just to hold this and see. Now I can, it's not even gonna come off. So nice and smooth. But what we do have now are all these old threads. But I'm gonna go ahead and take the other sole off and then we'll come back. All right, so we've got the old soles off, got all the old threads out. Uh, it's pretty clean now. Um, this shank is actually built into the insole, so it's not actually a, a separate shank that can just, you know, you can glue in. It's actually built into it and layered in between. So this is really good about this one. You don't have to worry about the shank. Um, these are the German soles and heels that we're gonna put on them. And normally we would discard the old soles at this point, but not here. We need these things right here to keep, uh, basically to use as a pattern for our new soles. So let's cut the new ones. All right, so I cheated to speed things up. I went ahead and put my first layer on 
a while back and just let that first coat glue because one of the things I've noticed about um, a lot of the German leather, whether it's the Martin Brothers or the um, uh, JRs, is they soak in. They're, they're, they're already roughed up. Um, some we actually have to rough up. These are, seem to already have a coarseness on the inside or the other side. And um, when you put that first coat of glue on, it soaks it in like a sponge um, and dries pretty quick. So I went ahead and did that. So when I put my second layer on, it will actually feel like as if we put a, um, uh, a first coat on some of the smoother leather. So match these up here. And it's dried enough that I can actually still ride on it with my pen here. But we've got to keep this pattern as close as possible. A lot of times what we'll notice with these uh, shoes without a welt is that the toes are one of the first things to get um, to get worn down. And customers will bring it in here and they're like tearing into their upper because the toe is actually already gone. You guys that have driving mocks, you probably know what I'm talking about. You, you wear through those, uh, those toes pretty quick and uh, you, you get a hole right there in the toe. There's no toe puff. And that's the same thing about these. See, it's so soft, there's no toe puff. And a lot of moccasin style loafers are that way. So luckily this guy got them in at the right time and we've got a perfect pattern. A lot of times we have to uh, use just our experience to try to recreate a line of what it would normally be. And uh, another reason why I like to uh, save each one instead of just using one and then flipping it over is because Believe it or not, I've seen many shoes come from the manufacturer from, um, from all, all different spectrums of, of um, quality and different prices that you'll find that they're not exactly symmetrical. I mean, because you gotta remember, even though a lot of these are uh, made on an assembly line, a lot of them are finished by hand. And um, if you can find a pair of bespoke shoes that are 100% symmetrical, then, uh, you're, you're a pretty lucky person. And most shoemakers will tell you that's a dirty little secret is um, as a shoemaker, they will they will know that where the flaws are, but you probably won't ever see them because they're so minute that they don't stand out to the naked eye unless you just stare at them. But um, every shoe is always gonna have a tiny little flaw on it. All right. Now that those are done, we can trash them because we have, and can, I don't know if you, you can tell, but we got our, our lines drawn on there and it should be a perfect fit for these because another reason why we want this to be very, very, very close is because with a shoe that's uh, black stitched, you're punching a hole. Every time you put a new sole in, you're actually punching a hole through the upper. And after so many times of resoling these things, you can actually turn your, your upper into Swiss cheese because you know, that needle's not going to go through um, the exact same hole. We try to keep it as close as possible. So when we trench these, we're going to trench them at the same distance uh, from the edge as the originals and mark it. So we're going to try to keep it as close as possible with the same stitch width, but it's it's you're never going to have that needle go in every single one of these holes. It's a lot easier to, uh, to do that with a Goodyear welt. Um, if you stitch it, it's gonna follow along out of a much closer guide than you're gonna get with these. All right, so we're gonna cut these out. Now we gotta stay as close to this line as possible because when I use uh, that as a template and I was making this, um, my pen can't get up underneath that beveled edge of the original sole, so I gotta leave myself uh, a little bit of room to sand and smooth this out. I don't want to sand off too much and staying right on top of this line is going to be perfect. You can tell this is a fresh blade on here. This is pretty tough stuff. Okay, so we've cut them out and um, I'm gonna go ahead and put my second coat on. But before I do, I'm actually gonna go in there and pre-groove this because I think it's easier to um, groove our channel for our stitches before, when it's off the shoe, especially for a very rigid shoe like this. Um, 
but that's just my personal preference. Some people like to do it when it's on the shoe. I think with these, the style, I just prefer to do it uh, without. But I'm gonna groove these and when I come back, you'll see that I've put a second coat on. And we don't need a lot of glue on these because if you, if you remember when I was taking the sole off, it was primarily just the stitches that are holding the sole on. There is like one coat of glue um, on the sole and on the upper, but the, the strength is not coming from the glue. It's actually coming from the stitches. And that's the way I like to do it as well. This first coat that I put on, it's not a, really a bonding thing. It's just to kind of fill those pores up so that the, the, the next coat acts as, you know, the, the main coat of glue. I'm gonna groove these and then I'll come back and put the glue. Got our trench cut in there. Um, sometimes these are actually done with a blind stitch um, and some people want it, some people don't care. Um, so these were just done with a typical stitch, I mean a, a channel on top. So we're going to, I'm not putting glue all the way out to the edges because this is a wetless. So you can actually see a tiny little bit of this, uh, the natural leather on the bottom of it. When, when, the, when the shoe is done, you'll actually see a tiny bit of the sole on both sides of it all the way around. And uh, I don't want that to be coated with glue. So I'm just putting a t one coat of glue in the middle and that's just what's gonna hold to the upper and the strength is gonna come from the stitches. That's why our channel has to be good. And you can see right here actually, that little dimple thing, that little ring. That's very thin. That's actually where, that's one of the pressure points to where it was fixing to bust through. So you'll sometimes see these actually on your sole itself. Um, it'll, and that's the first place that's gonna break through. You, you can, a lot of times you can feel it. So if you've got dress shoes and you feel a little soft spot like that, I guarantee when you take that sole off, you're gonna have a little ring like this and uh, you don't want that to bust all the way through. I mean, I've, I've had guys come in here that were I mean, their sock had to have been just soaking up the water. It's crazy. So, check your shoes and check them often. Make sure that they're in good condition. Uh, not only on the top, but also on the bottom. All right, now it's a waiting game. Go wait for that to glue. I've got brownies in the back. I'm gonna go get me something about to eat and have some coffee. Okay, so uh, we've got the soles stitched on, and um, with these, I like to go ahead and attach these. It, it completely depends upon the type of shoe. Sometimes you can't do it, like an Allen Edmonds. You can't put nails from the inside going up towards the block. Um, but sometimes when you, when you don't have a welt and all that to follow, I think it's easier, especially just to make sure that we get this part, which is called the breast, the hill breast. Um, we wanna make sure that's completely smooth. And if you attach it to the uh, sole, especially when it's very shallow, this is a very shallow um, hill block, then you put it on the sander and, and even if you go and you go and trim it with your knife and you're gonna either scuff the sole or you're gonna nick the sole. Um, so I just think it's easier to go ahead and put these on the block and glue them in. And then I'll go and attach it. I'll put a tiny little bit of glue on this, um, just like the original was put it back on and then I'll sand the edges once I get it back on. So these have already been sitting and glued and um, both of them. And then we'll just trim this excess to the hill breast. There you go. And then I'll actually put it on a very fine sander. I put some tape on the bottom of these, uh, just along the edge, and then got my knife and cut off the excess. The reason I did that is because what you'll find in a lot of these Italian um, style shoes, weltless, is there's often a beveled edge on both sides. So it's kind of got a rounded edge instead of a straight squared off edge. And on, a, on most shoes that are good, you're welted. Most of them are squared off. So when you actually go to ink the edges, um, you can you can avoid getting ink on the bottom just because it's it's they're perfectly you know boxed off and squared but when this thing is beveled um, it's very easy for the bristles of the ink brush to get over onto your, your finished sole so what i do is i put this tape around here while it's still squared off 
and then actually trim it with, um, with my edger with the tape. So that way um, it, it, it gives it the beveled edge. And there's also, if I were to, if I were to put the tape on what, after it's beveled, well, it's, it's rounded. There's no defined edge for me to actually use as a guide when I'm putting my, my tape around to keep this off from getting clean. But if I do it prior and then I groove around, well, now I've got my bevel and I've still got it perfectly where it's supposed to be. So it's clean all the way around. Another thing that I did is when I sanded this down after I trimmed it, I went ahead and went over it with uh, two different grit, uh, grit sandpapers. I usually go over it with like 100 and then I usually go over it with um, like 120. And sometimes I've got a, like a much higher grit, uh, very fine board, like a sanding board that sometimes I'll go and over the third time, just kind of depending on how smooth they're going. You want this thing to be like glass. So I go ahead and ink it because once again, once this is on the shoe, this is such a shallow hill block, it's very easy to uh, get a little bit of um, ink onto the sole. So it's easier just to go ahead and ink it now and then put your heel block on. But like I said, you can't do this with every, every single shoe. But whoop. But, dust that off. But now I can, so. And you gotta watch because if you, you get, I marked where my heel breast is actually gonna go on. If I start too far back, then it's gonna have a beveled edge and you're trying to put a square block on top of it. So you really just wanna start right in front of where the hill is going to be and that's where I mark it it's very hard hard leather so do this and this is I just sharpened this too so you pretty much have to almost lay on your shoe jack to keep it tight on the jack so right here so to pull the tape i'm actually going all right so uh while i was filming that last part i actually looked up and saw that my my uh card was full on my camera and i had to go back down i don't even know where i left off so um what i wound up doing is trimming all around the uh both of the shoes and um we're ready to put our heel blocks on so I put a little bit of glue on these things. And when you trim off your original sole, um, a lot of times you'll wind up because it's, you're going right on that line. You're like, like I said earlier, you know, your, your, your pen line, your tracing line when you go around the sole is not exactly you, you normally wind up with a little bit extra just to give you a little bit of sanding room. And uh, that's actually what's happened here. I've got just enough going around here that gives me a little bit of room to sand uh, to meet up with my original block. But this is uh, lined up perfectly at the breast. And I'll put this on a press. And then we're gonna, we're gonna put some nails going this way just to hold that block on. Compressor may go off, so it could be a little bit loud. Just want to give it a second to seat those things. There you go. Um, another thing you may have noticed before I actually hit the block, and you may have seen it while I was just working, is uh, I stitched the sole, but around the, uh, the heel, on just the sole, um, I put tacks. So this four part, the waist forward is held on by a little bit of glue and the stitches. The back around the seat is held on by that little bit of glue and some tacks. But um, now we're gonna put some nails that go all the way from the inside into the block. It's 
gloves getting in the way. You don't want them to go all the way to where you're gonna see them, um, that the head's poking through here with the tip. You just want to hold on the block. So I put five in here and that's enough um, because like I said, this part is already held on by tacks and you're just wanting enough to go through to hold the block on and the block is very light. And if you get just the right nail, it's gonna sink it to where it's, it's the, the tips are just barely gonna wanna poke uh, through the block. And because remember when I actually took these off and I actually had to sand off that tiny little bit, that's what you want. You want just a little bit poking through the block but not poking through the top lift. It just does not look good. Uh, we'll actually do some finishing nails um, around here, some brass finishing nails going this way through the hill block. So I'll go ahead and do the other one. So I don't know if you've ever seen it in other shoemaking videos. They've actually got these little hammers that has a little magnet on the end. Um, I just haven't ever been able to find one, so if anybody out there actually knows where you can get those, uh, let me know, because I would love to have those, and that way I don't have to actually get my finger in there. We actually have a machine that does this. It's a, a heel wheel, and you can, um, you can load the nails into it, and different patterns and then you can flip the shoe upside down and it comes down and presses and squeezes all the nails up into it. I use it quite often. The reason why I don't like it is because the shoe is upside down and it's very hard to place the, the, the nail exactly where you need it. Um, this way, the old fashioned way, you can actually see um, where you put it. There's a little bit of padding that's left in here from when I took the sock liners out. And I'm actually trying to use that little bit of padding to hold these things steady while I get the first one in there. In fact, I'm gonna put another one in here because one of them I wasn't happy with. At the very end, it crimped up running. There we go. Now the Santonis that came in actually had some nails going all the way up. Um, he wanted orange ones and a lot of the Santonis that had the orange soles have five, three, and two. Now they also don't have the dovetails, but he wanted the dovetails. So basically draw that around. It's just that little part. That's what they normally come with, but he wanted the dovetails. Get these things shined up. What's up guys? Uh, Heath gave me these. Uh, we're going to polish these real quick and then we'll be all done. Um, he's getting everything cleaned up. The shop is closed for the day, so we're trying to wrap up the old video. Um, so what we're going to do on the Santonis, they are in great shape. The leather is in good shape, so there's not a whole lot that we have to do to it. We're just going to put a little bit of a cream on there. Um, we're not going to do a pigment, uh, one with a pigment. We're going to use 
the Saphir Neutral. Um, it, it does not have pigment, so it's not going, it's, if you see these Santonis, the leather is kind of a, uh, I guess it's kind of a patinaed look to it. Um, it has a lot of light browns and dark browns all mixed together, and I don't want to ruin the look of this leather. So I think a good neutral will do the job. It'll put a little bit of a shine on it, put the conditioners back into the shoe, and, uh, and then we'll be good to go. All right, y'all, we've wrapped this up. We've done this pair of Santonis. And uh, went over them with some Saphir Medaille d'Or, and that stuff is incredible. I think he's gonna be pretty happy with these. Now, if you like this video, then make sure you like it, hit the subscribe button, and if you want us to talk about something specific, then um, post it in the comments and let us know. Appreciate it, have a good one.